In a recent video, we took an in-depth look at the most used formations in Europe's top five leagues. And one formation that stood out from the rest was the 3-4-2-1. So far this season, 21 different teams have used this lineup, making it one of the most popular choices for managers. With a 52% win rate and 1.6 goals per game, there's a reason why Antonio Conte's Spurs, Jose Mourinho's Roma, and Christopher Galtier's PSG are all using this lineup. But what makes it so special? Well, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the main tactics behind this formation and what makes it one of the most versatile lineups a manager can choose. Thank you so much to everyone who signed up to my Patreon. If you want access to the formation database with information on all formations used in Europe's top five leagues, then click the link in the description down below. The 3-4-2-1 is a slight variation on the 3-4-3, whose origin can be placed back to the 1930s with Vittorio Pozzo in Italy and Herbert Chapman in England. But it wasn't until Johan Cruyff's total football that the formation started to gain some serious traction. In recent years, the 3-4-2-1 has been used by many successful teams, including Thomas Tuchel's Champions League winning Chelsea side, Lucien Favre's Borussia Dortmund in 2018, or Antonio Conte's Inter, alternating this lineup with the 3-5-2 in their Serie A winning season. So with the history out of the way, let's take a look at the main structure and player responsibilities in the 3-4-2-1. The 3-4-2-1 features one goalkeeper, three defenders, two centre mids, two wing backs, two inside forwards and one striker. As with all modern systems, the goalkeeper will need to be great with his feet. The 3-4-2-1 is a formation that can quickly create overloads out wide, so he must be able to pick out the wing backs with a dinked pass, but also short passes to get the move going. PSG's Donnarumma is a perfect example of this, with great short and long pass accuracy, while also being a fantastic shot stopper. The three centre backs are the foundation of this formation. They will need to be strong physically, but will also need to have the ability of breaking pressing lines, either by carrying the ball forward into midfield, or with a key pass into the centre. The middle centre back will need to provide cover if the wide centre backs push up. However, his more central position allows him to better dictate play, and decide which side to move down. An excellent example is Chelsea's back three of Koulibaly, Thiago Silva and Fofana. Silva sits deeper than the other two, allowing them to hold a position in the half space, attempting to pick out the wing back, centre mid or inside forward. Silva's more central position means it's his choice which side the team want to move down and can quickly pick out the offensive set of players with a ball over the top. All stats in this video are brought to you by Sokerman, an in-depth player and team analysis platform. The link is in the description down below. Next up, the two centre mids are crucial both during build-up and for adding support in attack. Their positioning must be coordinated, with one moving forward, the other will sit and cover. They will need to have excellent link-up play, especially with the wing-backs and inside forwards, and will often find themselves on the edge of the box, so having a decent shot will also be a huge bonus. A perfect example is Atalanta's Dutch midfield duo of Cup Miners and Darun. Kurt Miners is currently Atalanta's top scorer, with a number of goals coming from long-range efforts with delayed runs onto the edge of the box, while Darun is used in a slightly more defensive position, excellent at stopping the opposition's counter-attacks, but also great at dictating build-up and breaking the first line. Next up, the wing-backs are the main provider of width for the team. They will be required to defend an attack consistently and have excellent delivery into the box. Against tougher opponents, they will shift alongside the back three to form a back five, and attempt to cover the space out wide. A great example is PSG's Hakimi and Mendes, with three goals and three assists between them so far this season. They rank as some of the highest in league arm for progressive passes, and always create an issue for the defence, giving width to PSG's attack, and linking up well with the incredible front three of Messi, Mbappe and Neymar. Next up, the two inside forwards are where this formation creates the most of its chances. Their positioning is often in between the defence and midfield lines, and so will need to be excellent at receiving the ball on the turn to immediately attack the back line. They can be used to add width, switching the formation into a 3-4-3, or can add central support and link up with the striker. Finally, the lone striker is the focal point for this formation. He will need to have excellent hold-up play and the ability to control the ball under pressure and lay it off to the two inside forwards. It's common for the striker in this lineup to act as a false nine, link up play in the centre with the inside forwards occupying the space he's vacated. Tottenham Hotspur's front three of Son, Kulusevski and Kane are players that understand these roles perfectly. Son and Kulusevski's incredible technical ability and pace means they can receive the ball in tight spaces and immediately attack the back line to either shoot from distance or feed the ball into Kane. While Kane's heat map shows us how much space he covers on the pitch, but is always present in the box to meet any through balls and crosses. 
As a whole, it's a formation that creates a lot of passing lanes for the whole team, with two diamond shapes out wide, and a tight triangle between the front three. On the attack, it can quickly overload the back line with five offensive players, with the two centre mids on the edge of the box to shoot or rotate possession, transforming the formation into a 3-2-5. While defensively, the compact pentagon shape in the centre means it often forces play out wide, where the wingbacks can close down any potential threats, and the formation can retreat into a solid 5-4-1 system. So it's a formation that can quickly get the upper hand if well executed, and the players mentioned earlier are all key players in their respective system, with each one doing exactly what is asked of them. So what makes this formation so popular? Well, simply by taking a look at the build-up patterns, we can see the amount of freedom it gives managers. Let's take a look. When building from the back, we can instantly see some important differences between managers that use this system. Gaultier's PSG tend to have only one centre mid help during build-up, forming an extremely wide diamond shape at the back that allows the team to always have outlet options. This means the other midfielder and wingbacks form another line of three, while the front three sit on the back line in a more narrow shape. This instantly creates issues for the opposition. If the ball moves directly out to the wingbacks, the opposition fullbacks will need to make a choice, as if they move over to cover, it could free up space for Messi or Neymar. If the opposition presses too high, then a dinked pass in midfield means the team usually has one midfielder completely free. However, other managers such as Graham Potter's Chelsea have a different approach to their first setup with both midfielders staying in support and the wingbacks out wide. This 3-4 shape means there are triangles across the whole width of the pitch, which creates easy passing lanes. But the true advantage comes when you factor in both inside forwards as well. This creates a diamond shape on both flanks, giving the wide centre-back plenty of options for moving the ball forward. The opposition could choose to close down each player and man mark, but this gets tricky with Aubameyang also dropping off the back line to create a 5v4 situation. To stop this, teams often find themselves committing a lot of players to the press and try and force Chelsea into a tight spot. But their ability to quickly rotate to the other flank plays into Chelsea's favour, as now they have the extremely dangerous Rhys James able to push up on the flank. Finally, some teams in Italy, such as Jose Mourinho's Roma or Gasparini's Atalanta, have an even more unique approach to their build-up. While they start as a back three, they will shift into a back four which can be formed in many different ways. With Atalanta, it's usually the right wing back Hatteboe who pushes up on the flank, where the team will try and move the ball into this area and create a quick overload. While with Roma, Chris Smalling usually steps into the centre alongside Cristante, allowing Matic to pick up a position between the lines and act as support to the front three. This means a quick ball over the top could instantly create a lot of issues for the opposition. So as we can see, the 3-4-2-1 is an extremely versatile formation and allows managers to freely express themselves during build-up. But it's when entering the opposition's half that this formation allows a team to create chances from all over the pitch. In the opposition's half, the 3-4-2-1 can quickly gain control of the pitch and box in the opposition. Having the two wide centre-backs in the half space means that there's a lot of channels the opposition need to cover. It's also here where we can see the main influence of the two inside forwards. Their positioning between the lines and in the half spaces is a very tricky one to stop and can leave the opposition in two minds. Made even worse if the wingbacks push up, creating a front five that can quickly disrupt the defensive block. There's a number of teams that may use a different starting lineup, but will often resort to a 3-4-2-1 when in possession. A good example is Xavi's Barcelona, who start as a 4-3-3, but with Busquets dropping between the centre backs, the formation is more resemblant of a 3-4-2-1 with the wingers moving inside and freeing up the flanks for the fullbacks. One way this system exploits gaps is with the coordinated movements of the two inside forwards. For example, let's say the ball is in possession of the right centre back. The inside forward could move into this space between the lines, freeing up the flank for the wing back. The striker moves over to the centre back on the side of the ball, allowing the other inside forward to push up. If the ball moves into the inside forward, the centre back can't step out, given the striker then being free. And if the fullback pushes up, it frees the flank for the wingback to cross into the box, where the other inside forward is present. It's for this reason that the inside forwards must have the ability to control the ball into space, to immediately attack the back line. These overloads out wide are one of the main threats of this formation, and the 3-4-2-1 can very quickly create gaps in behind the opposition's fullback. One way of creating even more pressure out wide comes through one of the centre mids. By moving out onto the flank, it allows the wingback to gain even more ground, and now the team has four players out wide, where they can choose to play it down the outside, into the inside forward, or directly into the striker. 
Now, teams that come up against the 3-4-2-1 are often very aware of these wide overloads and will often switch to a back five to stop any runs into the half space. However, this means there's more space in midfield, which is often exploited by the striker acting as a false nine, dropping off the defensive line, receiving the pass and moving the ball forward. This is something Spurs' Harry Kane does incredibly well, dropping off the back line, dragging a centre-back out of position and freeing up space for Son and Kulusevski to move centrally. With Son and Kulusevski moving centrally, this creates space out wide for the wing-backs that Kane can chip the ball into, before making a darting run into the box to finish off the move. Once the team enters the final third, this formation can resemble a 3-2-5, or even a 1-4-5, with the two wide centre-backs playing in line with the midfield. If well executed, it can be incredibly challenging for the opposition to gain ground, as the two centre mids and three centre backs mean they can cover any runs outside the box and regain possession. Now, while this formation is an excellent choice for attacking minded teams, there's a reason why it has one of the best defensive records in Europe, with only 1.23 goals conceded per 90. So let's take a look at some of its defensive principles. From opposition goal kicks, managers that use the 3-4-2-1 have a lot of options available to them when starting the play. Against the back four, one of the inside forwards could push up with the striker, with the other covering the fullback, allowing one of the wingbacks to cover the other fullback and one wingback to form a back four. Alternatively, against the back three, the team can quickly match up man for man and immediately apply pressure. The inherent structure of the 3-4-2-1 forms a pentagon shape in the centre which is difficult for the opposition to move through. And once the first pass is made, the striker can close off a back pass and the team can force the opposition into a tight spot near the touchline. If the opposition is able to beat the press and moves into the defensive half, this formation can quickly cover all the dangerous spaces by switching into a back five, with the inside forwards forming a midfield four and the striker staying up top for any potential transitions. This 5-4-1 shape provides plenty of central cover and forces teams out wide where the team can effectively double up on the wingers with the wingback and inside forwards closing off the space. So on paper, this is one of the most dangerous formations a team can choose to play. But it does require a lot of talented players and an incredible work rate from every player on the pitch to ensure that there's no gaps the opposition can exploit. So let's take a look at some of the main weaknesses of this formation. Firstly, it's a lineup that can often find itself struggling against a low defensive block. Given the number of players on the back line, it often results in teams sitting in a low block and stopping any crosses or passes that come into the center. Although it has five players on the defensive line, it can often find itself rotating the ball on the edge of the box, with no player finding space to make the play. For this formation to be the most dangerous, it requires the team to move quickly and vertically and not allow the team to get set up. Next up, it's a formation that can deal with counterattacks relatively easily given the three-man defense. But where it can struggle is with switches in play. As it's a formation that likes to have players in close proximity to have easier passing lanes, if the opposition quickly moves the ball to the other flank, it can be exposed as the wingback could find himself in a numerical disadvantage. Similarly, if the wingbacks are not defensive minded enough and struggle to make it back into the defensive line in time, teams will often look to exploit the space out wide either side of the centre backs before delivering a ball into the box. As with all formations, it requires the whole team to constantly work together, and a single player not tracking back could leave gaps for the opposition. And there you have it. The recent success of this formation has meant it's become one of the most popular choices for managers, and its popularity seems to be only increasing over the years. But what do you think of the 3-4-2-1? Let me know in the comments down below. Finally, now you're up to date on all the main team tactics, why not check out this video to improve your individual tactics and make you a better team player? As always, if you enjoyed this content, then please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.